Aloha and welcome. My name is Taylor Norris and I'm a certified galactic astrology soul reader and Reiki master teacher. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the information I shared at my Reiki shares. I'm sharing the share for my Reiki share. And it's about the upcoming astrological transits between the Pisces new moon, which occurred on March 9th, 10th of 2024, and the transits that are occurring up until the Libra lunar eclipse on March 24th, 25th, 2024. And I will cover some of the major ones, not all of them. It's not a comprehensive, every single last little transit that is going to occur, but it's some of the broader strokes that are occurring and including diving into the astrological energies of the Aries equinox, which occurs March 19th, 20th of 2024. And at the end, I'm going to share with you a galactic heritage card pool providing higher guidance about how to navigate this time, this portal as we enter the eclipse portal. So what is the higher guidance? What's coming through in the galactic and what messages are pertinent and relevant and helpful and valuable at this time? So I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you want to join the next Reiki share, definitely be sure to learn more information on my website. All the links are below. I'd love to have you. Every single Reiki share, it grows to a larger, broader soul family. And I'm so excited and delighted every single month, every single new moon. Next new moon is a solar eclipse. So it'll be even extra special. So I hope to see you there if the date and time works for you and if you want to be there. I am available for one-on-one -on -one astrology readings, a variety of different readings and Reiki sessions. And coming up, I'm teaching two Reiki classes, so Reiki Master Class in March after our Libra lunar eclipse. So this is Reiki Master March 25th, 27th, and then Reiki 1 and 2 April 4th, through 5th. And this is right before the Aries solar eclipse. So I chose to schedule my classes then because learning Reiki and being in Reiki energy is a wonderful way to balance and soothe and really invite in the higher frequencies of eclipse season, which can be a very intense time of change and transformation and these kinds of things. And my experience teaching Reiki classes in the eclipse portal has been like this is great time. <laughs> great time to do it. There will also be an Aries solar eclipse distant Reiki share. That's the next free distant Reiki share on the solar eclipse. And when I have it scheduled for, it's actually when the eclipse will be exact. So I think that one starts at 8 a.m. Hawaii time and the eclipse will be, that will be in the portal of energy. So we will be like in it, in the journey, in the energy directly. So if that date and time works for you, that is available for you to sign up for on my website. And then April 20th, I'm teaching a combined Reiki and astrology class that is on the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. And this is one of the major transits of the year. I would say Pluto moving into Aquarius was is like one of the, the massive, undeniably massive transformational transits of this year that ripples out, you know, the next couple decades. And this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus is another one of those moments this year that is like, whoa, this is definitely a big deal. And its timing of coming right after the two eclipses makes it even more potent. So if you feel called to learn more about this conjunction, more about Jupiter in your chart, Uranus in your chart, and really receive the healing invitation of this transit, you can learn more about that class on my website, taylornorrisreiki.com. So looking into some of the upcoming transiting energies, this is what's on deck. So following this Pisces new moon, 
on March 11th, Venus enters Pisces. She's been in Aquarius. And so when one of the personal planets changes signs, this is something we feel, this is something we notice. So Venus in Pisces is exalted. This is a zodiac sign where Venus, the divine feminine, can really express herself beautifully. This is magical and mystical and creative and being in the divine flow, being in spiritual practice and oneness and communion. This is artistic and romantic and really, really quite expansive and flowing and wonderful. So this is a real flourishing of that divine feminine energy, something to definitely look forward to. A lot of like pleasure, just like enjoyment, enjoying life, enjoying life's pleasures, enjoying being in the divine flow of source creation. So really, really beautiful. March 17th, the sun conjuncts Neptune, and this is a spiritualization of our life force energy. The sun is our personal energy. This is a great day and time for cleansing, for purification, for spiritual practice, communing with the waters, going and being in nature, paying attention to your dreams. This can be like an experience in waking life that is like you're in a lucid dream (laughs) kind of energy. So paying attention to your dreams leading up to that and then after that as well. We're definitely all of Pisces season. A lot of the work that's happening spiritually is happening through the dream time. So as you're guided to pay attention to your dreams, definitely do so. And if you can't remember them or, you know, you're not recording them or anything like that, that's okay to just trust that that process is happening at a really deep, 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 unconscious, subconscious level. So March 17th, this is a day for, you know, mysticism and magic and inspiration and creativity. You may feel also like you don't have a lot of energy. And so it might be a great time to just rest too. really allow yourself to rest, which is really, you know, good advice to seeing as the rest of the month and and really into April and beyond, there's a lot of big energy. So taking as many moments this Pisces season as you can to rest is, is definitely a good idea in the remainder of our Pisces season, because as you can see here, we're preparing for the new, we're preparing for Aries season. We're preparing for the Aries equinox, spring equinox in the northern hemisphere and autumn equinox in the southern hemisphere. Leading up to that, we'll go into the chart of the Aries equinox, but we have Mercury conjunct the north node of the moon. And Mercury is our mind, our communications, our ideas. So there could be ideas, informations, downloads about what are your next steps for your soul growth. The nodes of the moon are all about soul growth, collective soul growth. So the collective growth of humanity, our path as a collective in our evolution, but also ideas about where you're at now, your next steps on your spiritual path, your evolutionary growth path. So really being in that state of listening and receiving information, ideas, communications, this can be messages and discussions with others too about things you are doing together to bring about more of this sense of fulfillment and independence and sovereignty as this is happening in the zodiac sign of Aries. March 19th is the equinox. Like I said, we'll look at that chart in just a moment. March 20th, we have Mercury conjunct Chiron. And so Mercury has just received you know, ideas and informations about soul growth. And then conjuncting Chiron, Chiron is the asteroid healer, teacher, mentor energy, wise energy, deep wisdom energy. So there could be a healing of the mental body, of the mind, healing communications, reflecting on your healing path, on your healing journey, what are your needs at this time? What kind of support are you in need of? 
In what ways are you offering support and healing to others through your ideas, your consciousness, through your day-to-day communications as well? This is really, really interesting energy to be experiencing on this equinox. And like I said, oh, we'll, we'll look at it a little bit more in the chart. The next day, Venus conjuncts Saturn. And this is actually, I'm seeing this as quite helpful because Venus in Pisces, like I said, is very inspired and expansive. She's exalted. She's just, she's saying yes, she's creating, she's in her magic zone. And with Saturn, it's like, okay, you've received all that inspiration now. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to systematize it? How are you going to bring it into earthly reality, give it material form, give it structure. So this can be like a helpful constriction and consolidation Saturn of this Venusian divine feminine inspiration. So bringing those dreams into reality powerfully in the service of your spiritual mission as well in the sign of Pisces. March 22nd, Mars enters Pisces, and this is the divine masculine energy receiving its healing, its focus and motivation and drive, your focus, your motivation, your drive, your ego energy, your self energy, your sense of I am being fully committed and focused on your deeper spiritual soul and spirit mission, Pisces. So this is like your personal will unified with divine will, your actions and your motivations being in alignment with a higher path, the spiritual warrior kind of energy actually taking those actions to bring about all of this inspiration that's been coming through. On March 24th, March 25th is the Libra full moon, which is a penumbral lunar eclipse. And I'll be doing a separate video about that, but that's one where you'll want to check if you have anything in your astrological chart around five degrees of Libra. That is what you can look for and see also what house in your chart the eclipse is happening in. And I'll do another video looking at those energies. I have looked at this chart and it's pretty, it's interesting. I I like what I see. I was a little scared to look at them, (laughs) but when I looked, I was like, actually, this is, this is pretty okay. This is pretty okay. I'm a fan. So this is the chart here of the Aries Equinox, the regular astrological chart, and then the galactic charts. And this again, this is occurring March 19th, 20th, depending on your time zone. And this occurs every year when the sun, which you see here, enters the sign of Aries. And this is the astrological new year essentially, because Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So this is another moment of kind of like, okay, new year, new beginning, new steps, you know, new path, new direction, a fresh energy. And you can see here in this chart that the sun entering Aries is conjunct Neptune, Neptune, the planet of spirituality, spiritualization. You know, what I'm seeing with this is that this is like this next year, a lot of people who you don't necessarily think would be waking up, waking up. You know, people you would never think would be asking you about dragons or your astrology chart or, you know, these kinds of things actually like coming to you as that spiritual person, that person who knows about these kinds of things and, you know, asking questions and and being interested. So this is a very strong energy here of, of awakening, definitely, and spirituality and spiritual growth. It's also letting go to Neptune can be dissolution, letting go. Really, it's a time to to be releasing 
any of the old stuck energy, stagnant energies, trauma energies too, especially looking at this little stellium here in Aries. Stellium means like a group of planets or points that are all together. And so at the time of the Aries equinox, Mercury, the mind, mental body communications is in this little sandwich, essentially sandwich between the North Node of the Moon and Chiron. So Mercury receiving that healing information, a deep healing of the mental body, of the emotional body, of communication, of the sense of I am who I am. I have a right to exist. I have a right to express myself and having some clear ideas about your healing path moving forward and your soul growth moving forward at this time. What's also notable is that as the sun enters Aries, it's in trine to the moon and the moon in Leo is opposite Pluto. And so this makes what is called an easy opposition because you see the sun opposite Pluto here. That's the opposition part. But there's the trine between the moon and the sun. This is a harmonious aspect and a sextile between Pluto and Neptune and the sun, another harmonious aspect. So the moon in Leo is all about creativity, creative expression, sovereignty, mothering energy, nurturing energy, divine feminine energy. So this is a really powerful creative year. I'm really feeling that a creative year. And it's not just flippant creativity, not that necessarily that any creativity could be flippant now that I say that, but it's, it's soul originated, soul generated creativity with the moon opposite Pluto. It's coming from a very deep space. We could also be seeing deep healing of divine feminine wounding, mother wounding, those kinds of themes coming up as well to be healed, cleared, and released in this next cycle. Very powerful equinox. Looking at the galactic energies too, this is a lot of galactic support. You could think about this as, you know, different star beings and constellations and stars that are very accessible at the time of the equinox and also supportive over the course of the next six months, next year. We have Pegasus this constellation, Skiat star, the supergalactic center, that energy also coming through Neptune as well and the Reiki journey for this new moon that we will be moving into in just a few moments. We will be really focusing in on those energies because this new moon now is linked to those energies as well. We also have the eagle coming through Aquila constellation, Altair star, both through the moon and through Pluto. This is boldness. This is courage. This is bravery. This is daring to take those action steps that are coming through this Mercury in between Chiron and the North Node of the moon, right? Those divine inspirations and divine ideas actually having the courage to take those actions, to receive those frequencies, receive those instructions, and make them real. The nodes are still aligned with Alpharat star, Chiron here with Tau Ceti star, and this is highlighting themes of freedom. This is also highlighting themes around that deep subconscious, unconscious healing, healing in the dream time. And so even if you're not sure what is the healing that's taking place, just trusting your process and that things that need to come to light will come to light in divine timing. Mercury here also align, aligned to Tau Sati star and Cetus constellation. This is also the flying whales and the whale energies and really just very beautiful energies coming through the nodes, Mercury and Chiron. I've channeled journeys recently to both Cetus and Andromeda these particular stars. And it's just so, so much help and so much support and love and compassion for where humanity is right now on the earth. Mars is opposite. Here's Mars in the chart, opposite Alphard 
star in Hydra. And this is balancing divine feminine, divine masculine also within the new paradigms and the new consciousness and bringing new levels of that divine union. So balancing out those opposite energies within self so that we are more directly experiencing and enacting from a space of wholeness and oneness, unity, coherence for the highest good of all, Aquarius. Jupiter aligned with all Mach star in Andromeda constellation. This is very helpfully grounding here. This is Jupiter in the chart here, really approaching its conjunction with Uranus within orb right now, meaning you can start feeling what this energy and what this conjunction is all about. With Almak Star, I did a journey there recently. And what was coming through about that is that the beings of Almak have undergone the process that earth humans are in right now, meaning they achieved that enlightenment. They achieved that individuality and sovereignty and knowing thyself fully, the complexity, the richness, the uniqueness of themselves as individuals, and then were able to come together in more of a unification group consciousness and really co-create from that place of oneness and with love with their planets within Almach star system. So they're exceedingly helpful guides here. Lilith here aligned with Draco constellation through Ban star. This is our dragon energy, our dragon friends definitely with us this year in year of the dragons. This is where you can see Lilith in this chart here. She is also opposite Lilith, is opposite Cygnus constellation, Deneb Adish star. This is the shaman star. So this is once again an invitation to engage with shamanic journeying, Reiki journeying, those kinds of altered states of consciousness where you can receive your divine guidance and feel your sense of connectedness to all of the support that is there. This is also more ideas kind of similar to this Almach energy about what is heaven on earth. Like what does it take to create heaven on earth and live in that, empower that timeline, empower that reality for more and more people here. The beings of Cygnus and Deneb Adish work together to create that kind of reality within their planets as well. So this can bring about even more helpful guidance about what to do, what not to do, and what all of that is about. So I think that is most of what I wanted to share about this Aries Equinox. I mean, it's infinite portal there, but that that feels like more than enough. So in terms of the guidance for this period of time, this is the card that came through. This is the online app edition of the Galactic Heritage Cards by Lisa Royal Holt. Love this deck. And I asked, what's the higher guidance for this period of time? And this is the card that came through. It's the very last card in the deck, number 108, which very sacred, powerful number of completion and transcendence and enlightenment. The card theme is emptiness. And the galactic species is Orion Light. The timeline is future. And so the Orion Light lineage is one of the integrated, enlightened manifestations of the beings of Orion constellation and the Orion archetypal energy which was a civilization, a species, a group consciousness that went through great polarity and duality, much exaggerated to even what we experience here on earth. And they eventually, through their own spiritual practice, through their own understanding, through going in the most opposite directions you could go, finally came back into integration, into centeredness, into oneness, into unification, into higher understanding, into compassion as well. 
And so this is one of the Orion light cards. That energy is with us. That energy is presence. The final card of the deck too. This speaks to a time of completions. Yes, we have the Aries equinox in between the Pisces new moon and the Libra lunar eclipse, but there is kind of building up to that equinox, a sense of completions. And then the Libra lunar eclipse in and of itself, it's a big full moon. So again, it has this energy of completions. The Libra lunar eclipse is also a south node of the moon lunar eclipse, which has an even deeper soul level resonance with shedding that which we are carrying from the past, past lives, old patterns, old expressions of Libra archetypal energy that no longer serve our highest good. I'm going to record a whole separate video about that eclipse, so stay tuned. But really, this is a time to be practicing whatever your spiritual practice is in that sacred space, in that time, emptying yourself of all the distractions in your meditation, in your practice, also being aware of any distractions or interfering energies, densities, heaviness, etc. Things that are not coherent within your field, within your life, within your experience in this period of time and not getting distracted by any of it, keeping your focus, keeping your centeredness, trusting yourself, trusting your spiritual process as well. So I'm going to put on the screen the card text as well so we can go a little deeper here. Imagine taking off in a plane. At first, it is bumpy and the scenery is filled with many distracting things. This represents the mind. As you take off and fly through the clouds, it is like passing through the emotions. Sometimes there is bumpiness in the clouds. Eventually you rise above the clouds and there is nothing but endless empty sky. This is your true state of consciousness, an endless empty field of awareness that contains nothing. There are no opinions or desires, only light. The Orion light within you, the sky, has always existed and always will. When you recognize this, you awaken. You can pause the video and read this lower paragraph if you would like to do that. But what I'm going to pull out is this final couple lines here. This card is meant as an encouragement for your spiritual journey and an embrace given to you by the source itself. Surrender to the embrace. Become nothing. And you will find that in that nothingness, the loving fullness of creation will be all that exists. And that reminds me of something else I was sharing about at the Pisces new moon distant Reiki share. And that's this notion, this idea, this possibility that we are living inside of a black hole, that our experience of the universe is within a black hole, a larger black hole. And to really touch and experience that sense of emptiness and fullness this comes from the work of Nassim Harriman, the idea that we're living inside of a black hole. He's discovered this through his physics experiments and theories and writing equations and studying this in the lab and generating technology from what he's discovering. So very, very valid and valuable information. Take this perspective if it resonates. It certainly resonates with me that take this idea of this black hole, something we think of as void, as emptiness, as nothingness, and to understand that that emptiness, that nothingness, that voidness can be so full of life and star systems, our solar system, planets, such a wide diversity of beings with such a wide diversity of consciousness. And we have the ability to access and touch that 
within ourselves by going within, by taking journeys, by doing our meditations and different practices, that that entire black hole universe is contained not only within every cell, but within every atom, within every proton, within every even smaller bit of information than that, that we really are the universe and the universe is us. And to keep focused on that, that feeling, that embodiment, when the hard things come up, return to that when the distractions come up and know that that is your true nature. I hope you find this video helpful and valuable. And thank you so much for watching. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Mahalo.